Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's tutorial, I will demonstrate how to cut and sew a pyjama shirt. I drafted the pattern for this in a previous tutorial. Its link will be above and in the description box below. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 clothing tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you! I'll be working with the following items. Pins, water erasable fabric pencil, tape measure, a pair of scissors, the pyjama shirt pattern pieces, which I drafted in a previous tutorial. Four yards of Dutchess satin. I will use this for both the shirt and the pants. Half a yard of black contrast Dutchess satin. Shambhala cord. These are all the pattern pieces that I will use to make the pyjama shirt. The link to the tutorial will be in the description box below. I will now go ahead and cut out all these pattern pieces on my fabric. So I've gone ahead to cut out all the pattern pieces on my fabric. This is the front piece. I cut two pieces for the front piece. I use that fanning seam allowance all through, except for the side seam and the M, where I use one inch seam allowance. This is the back piece. I cut one piece of this unfold. I use half an inch seam allowance all through, except for the side seam and the M, where I use one inch seam allowance. This is the sleeve. I cut two pieces of the sleeve on fold. I use that for an seam allowance at the upper part and the aim and one inch for the side seam allowance. This is the front facing. I cut two pieces for the front facing and I've already interfaced the wrong sides of the two facing pieces. I use the an inch seam allowance all through except for the M where I use one inch seam allowance. This is the convertible color for this. I cut two pieces on fold and I've already interfaced the wrong sides of both pieces. I used half an inch seam allowance all around the convertible color pattern. I will use this Shambhala cord for the piping that is a de design detail on the pyjama shirt. This bias cord fabric strip is 1.5 inches wide and I will now place the Shambhala cord in between the wrong sides of the fabric strip. I will fold the fabric strip into two like this. Then I will stitch very close to the Shambhala cord on my sewing machine. So I'm now at my sewing machine. The first thing I will do is to change the regular machine foot into a, into a zipper foot. This will make it possible for me to stitch very close to the Shambhala cord. I will now go ahead and place the Shambhala cord in between the wrong sides, at the middle of the wrong side of the fabric strip and I will fold it into two, like this. Then I will go ahead and do the stitching. 
very close to the Shambhala cord like this. I will do some more pieces of this for the center front, the collar, the sleeves and also for the pyjama pants. So this is what I will use for the piping. This is the strip that I will use for the piping of the shirt. I have already knocked the position of the button stand as you can see. I will also go ahead and notch the position of the button stand on the facing as well. I will now go ahead and pin the piping to the center front of the shirt. Note that the side with the Shambhala cord will face inward. I will paint from the bottom stand position at the neckline down to the end of the shirt. I will make sure that the piping extends beyond the bottom stand position by about half an inch. Once I'm done painting, I will now place the facing on top of it like this, right sides are together and I will also paint in place using the same paints I used to paint the piping in place. I will now pin so that the piping is sandwiched in between the facing and the front bodies. I will now take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. I will now go ahead and do the stitching now from the point where the button stand starts from down to the end of the shirt. I will also use my zipper foot for this. So now the stitching has been done and this is what the piping looks like and I've already aimed the raw edges of the two piping of the two facing pieces. And I've also gone ahead to give the two front pieces a thorough press especially around the center front area. This is the back piece and with the wrong side facing up, I will go ahead and paint and place the two front pieces on top of the back piece so like the wrong sides are together. I will align the two pieces very well. I will push the neckline facing out of the way. I will now go ahead and stick the front and the back shoulders together using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. What I intend to do is a French seam. But first I will pin the pieces in place before taking it to my sewing machine to do the stitching. So now the stitching has been done, I will now reduce the one quarter inch seam allowance to about one eighth of an inch. So I will trim it off like this. I will now flip it over to the wrong side. Then I will stitch the shoulders the second sign using one quarter of an inch seam allowance. I will also make sure that the neckline facing is out of the way. 
I'm using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance because remember that we added half an inch sewing allowance when cutting out the fabric so we are using the remaining one quarter of an inch to do the second stitching. So now the stitching has been done. At this point you should go ahead and press the shoulder seam lines. I will now move over to the side seam. I will pin the front and back side seams together like this. After pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half a knee sewing allowance. I will also be doing the French seam. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. I will now reduce the half an inch seam allowance to about one quarter of an inch. So I'll trim it off like this. I will now turn it to the wrong side and I will stitch the side seam the second time using the remaining half an inch seam allowance. Remember that I used up one inch for the side seam allowance when I was cutting out the fabric. So now the French stitching technique has been done for the side seams. At this point, you should go ahead and press the side seams using the pressing iron. These are the two color pieces. The wrong sides of the two color pieces have been interfaced. I will now go ahead and pin the piping all around the edges of the color except the lower edge. The side of the piping with the Shambhala cord should face inwards. Once I'm done pinning, I will place the second color piece on top of the first one like this. Right side to right side. I will also pin in place using the same pins that I used for the first pinning. The piping should be sandwiched in between the two color pieces. I will now go ahead and do the stitching using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done and I have turned the collar to the right side. I have also given it a thorough press. I will now fold the collar into two like this and I will notch the middle points. This is the main shirt piece. And I have already pressed the half an inch seam allowance at the shoulder line of the facing in place as you can see. I will also go ahead and notch the center back neckline like this. I will now go ahead and pin one of the collar pieces to the neckline of the pyjama shirt, making sure that the middle points match up. Right sides are together. I will pin from one shoulder seam line to the other. For now, I won't be stitching the front neckline. I will now go ahead and do the stitching from one shoulder seam line to the next using a sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done. As you can see, I stitch from one shoulder seam line to the other using half an inch sewing allowance. It is now 
It's now time to stitch the remaining parts of the collar to the two front necklines. So I will align the collar piece to the front neckline like this and then I'll flip the facing to the wrong side like this so that the right side of the facing and the collar are together and the collar is now sandwiched in between the front neckline and the neckline of the facing. I will pin in place like this. I will do the same thing for this other side as well. Once I'm done pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. What I will do now is to notch the front necklines so that it can relax and lie flat. Go ahead and notch the same allowances like this for both front necklines. I will make a snip at this end so that I will be able to fold the remaining part of the collar inwards and stitch in place. I will also snip this end also. I will snip by about half an inch. I will now fold the remaining unsewn part of the collar inwards like this. I will pin in place. Once I'm done pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch using about one eighth of an inch sewing allowance. I will stitch very close to the edge of the collar. So now the stitching has been done as you can see and I've also gone ahead to give the collar a thorough press. I still have these two ends from the front facing. Remember that I've already pressed the half an inch seam allowance in place. These are the shoulder lines of the front facing. So I'll go ahead and, and stitch this to the shoulder line of the shirt. I will use invisible hand stitching technique for this. These are the two sleeve pieces. I have this pattern piece here, which I traced out from the lower end of the sleeve pattern. So I traced this out from the lower end of the, of the sleeve pattern. And I use this to cut out the two facing pieces. I use that for an inseam allowance all through, except for the side where I used one inch seam allowance. And I've already interfaced the side of the two pieces. So I will place this facing piece at the lower end of the sleeve like this. Right side of the facing is facing the wrong side of the sleeve. I will paint in place like this. Then I will stitch on my sewing machine using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see and I've given it a thorough press. 
I have also pressed in place the upper parts, the upper sewing allowance. The sewing allowance at the upper part, as you can see. I will now insert the piping in between the facing, like this. I will pin in place first. Then I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using about 1 8 of an inch sewing allowance, very close to the edge of the facing fold. I will do the same thing for the other piece as well. So now the stitching has been done, as you can see. I have fixed the piping in place. I will now go ahead and join the side seams of the two sleeve pieces together. I will use the French stitching technique. So with the wrong sides together, I will paint the sleeves in place like this. Then I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done, I will now reduce the half an inch sewing allowance to one quarter inch sewing allowance. So I will trim it off like this. I will now turn it to the wrong side and I will do the second stitching using the remaining half an inch sewing allowance. Remember that we added one inch as, as the side same sewing allowance when I was cutting out the fabric. So now the stitching has been done using the French stitching technique. This is what the wrong side of the sleeve looks like now. At this point, you should go ahead and give your sleeve a thorough press. It is now time to fix the sleeves to the armholes of the shirt using the French stitching technique also. First, I will notch the middle point of the sleeve at the sleeve edge like this. I will now go ahead and paint the sleeve to the armhole of the shirt, making sure that the side seam line of the shirt matches up with the side seam line of the sleeve and also the center of the sleeve matches up with the shoulder seam line apart. Once I'm done pinning, I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch in place using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. I will do the same thing for this other side as well. So now the stitching has been done. I will now go ahead and reduce the one quarter of an inch sewing allowance to about one eighth of an inch. So I will trim off the excess like this. I will now turn the shirt to the wrong side. And I will go ahead and stitch all around the armhole using the remaining one quarter inch seam allowance. Remember that I used half an inch seam allowance all around the hammer when I was cutting out the fabric. So now I have, success I have successfully fixed the sleeve to the handle of the pyjama shirt using the French stitching technique. I have also gone ahead to give the sleeves a thorough press, especially around the armhole area. I have also gone ahead to aim the lower part of the, of the shirt. And also I gave the lower part a thorough press. I will now go ahead and create the button holes on the right side of the pyjama shirt and I will fix buttons of the pyjama shirt and this is the standard for all female shirts. So now I have fixed the buttons and the button holes and this is the final look of the pyjama shirt. So that's it guys we are done. If you find this video helpful 
Do not forget to give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment down below. Share this video with your friends who are interested in sewing. And do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.